Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today's video will be my September, September? <laughs> Spin the bottle TBR game for February. <laughs> Welcome back to the chaos that is the Spin the Bottle TBR game. This will be installment two. And if you happen to miss last month's January's TBR video, I will link that down below. In that video, I do a little tour of the board itself so that you can get acquainted with all of the spaces, what they mean, what some of the rules are. And also in that episode, there was a really fun segment where I did a what's in the box challenge with Caleb and it was terrifying. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, and I hope that this episode is just as good, if not better. So in the month of February, there are a couple things going on. There is the Polarthon, which is hosted by JD Ray Reads. I will link her channel as well as the announcement video to the Readathon down in the description. This year, there are four teams to participate on, and they are Penguin, Polar Bear, Walrus, and Arctic Fox. And this year, I am pledging my allegiance to Team Penguin, which is led by Molly over at Mind of Molly. Are we surprised? No. I will say that I resonate most with the Arctic Fox because I have a fox skull tattoo on my shin, but my soul also belongs to Molly. So that's where we're at. I had to go with Penguin. The announcement video that Jade put out will line out all of the rules, but basically each team has specific prompts for their respective mascot. So with the spins that I do today, I'm hoping that maybe I could sneak in a couple of the books that I want to read for Polarthon to count for some of the spins because the Polarthon is only from the 1st to the 7th of February. Other than that, February is also the second month for the Tog Along, which I'm co-hosting with Steph, Molly, and Jody. And this month we are reading Throne of Gra Grass. <laughs> the Throne of Grass. <laughs> Not again. This month we are reading Throne of Gra- Oh no. This month we are reading Throne of Glass and last month we read Assassin's Blade. So if I can sneak Throne of Glass in there too, we'll see. I don't know what's gonna happen. So that being said, I think that's all I have to say. I plan on doing five spins just like last month because I have a feeling it will not stop at five. So we'll, we'll see what happens. spin I landed on got me translated work, which is a prompt that I am really excited to get. For this prompt, I ended up going over to Caleb's bookshelf and picking out a book that I have actually been wanting to read for a while and one that is one of Caleb's favorites. So this is kind of like a double prompt because picking something that is Caleb's favorite is also something that I've wanted to do for a while as well. And the book in question is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. This is a translated work from Japanese into English. And Murakami is a author that Caleb really, really likes. And I have yet to experience any of his work. So I am very much looking forward to giving this a shot. This is his favorite of Murakami's work. And again, I'm just really looking forward to it. So basically, Kafka on the Shore is about a young boy named Kafka who runs away from home, either to escape a gruesome prophecy or to search for his long missing mother and sister and an aging simpleton called Nakata, who never recovered from a wartime affliction and is now drawn toward Kafka for reasons that he cannot fathom. Caleb described this to me as almost like a coming of age story mixed with like an adventure? I think he said adventure. He might have not said adventure. <laughs> a quest maybe? I'm not sure. But regardless, I am choosing this book for this prompt of translated work and I am very excited about it. It has a nice flop. <laughs> was a mystery 
mystery spin. I had one of these last month. And after this video is out, I will be posting a special reading vlog that involves that mystery book in that reading vlog, which that vlog is also very special in and of itself. So like, just hold on and wait for it because I'm very excited about it. But same with this month. I have the ability to keep this book a secret and that's what I'm doing. So I will come out with another secret vlog sometime in the next month, which involves this secret book for this spin number two. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> spin number three was a challenge prompt and we all know how it went last month. It was traumatic. <laughs> this one will be a little different. I think I'm going to do this challenge by myself. So for now, I'm going to continue on with this TBR game, but right after this exact clip of me talking right now, I am going to cue in the clip of me doing the challenge video. All right, so I've picked the challenge that I'm going to do and this one I'm going to do, how many times can you pet Juno? Juno is our pet cat and she is an ass to say the least. <laughs> She's adorable, she's a beautiful cat, but her personality sucks. She only wants to be loved when she is asking to be loved. And right now she's sleeping upstairs. And the game is if I can pet her 10 times without her attacking my hand, then I get to pick the book that I want to read for this spin, which is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm a co-host for the Tog Along and we're on Throne of Glass this month. So I want to see if I can add this to the existing TBR so I don't have to add it on on top of everything else that I wanna read. But if Juno attacks my hand before the 10th time, my punishment book is one that I do wanna read, but it is not a priority right now. And it is just something that, you know, I would get to it when I got to it. But that book is City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. If she attacks my hand on the 10th pet, but I'm able to like snatch my hand away before she makes any damage, then I still get to pick Throne of Glass, okay? Those are the ground rules and we're just gonna go upstairs and see see how this goes. I won't be talking because I want to give myself the best possible chance of winning. So here we go. <laughs> Could have gone better. <laughs> so the first little like swat that she did, I wasn't gonna count it because she didn't actually use her paws. It was just like her bare mitt, you know? And then on, um, I think it might've been the seventh pet. I don't know, she actually like bit me. So challenge failed. <laughs> Looks like I will be reading City of Glass this month by Cassandra Clare. Damn it, Juno. <laughs> this is a big book. It's 541 pages. Um, I guess if you didn't know, City of Glass is the third installment of the Mortal Instruments series of the Shadowhunters world. This is the one where we follow Clary and Jace. But yeah, the first book of the series is City of Bones. If you care, you can go ahead and look that up. It's a weird time. It's an all right series so far. I wanna finish it and I guess I'm gonna be one step closer. So passing it back to past Sydney so that you can watch the rest of the game. <laughs> So a challenge. That's the third time I've landed on a challenge space. So that means I have to add another spin at the end of the spins. So obviously I will be reading at least six books this month and not just five. And the same with this one, I will add in the clip of me doing another challenge prompt after this exact clip of me speaking. And then I will go right into another clip of me spinning for the, what is it? The fifth time? <laughs> Hi, future Sydney here again, here with another challenge prompt. <laughs> Last one might have been a little bit anticlimactic. I get it, but I thought it was funny because it really, petting Juno is a challenge. So whether you see that or not is up to you, but in this household, Juno is a challenge. <laughs> but okay, so for the second challenge, we'll see how good it goes because I think that Avi will get excited with this one. Juno might get excited too, who knows? She's a wild card. But okay, so 
what I have decided on doing is a trick shot challenge. So I'm going to take this blanket here out of this basket so that I have a basket. Okay. It's like a wire basket. I'm going to put it at the base of the stairs here and I'm going to go to the top of the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, I will be rolling down Avi's tennis ball, trying to get it into the basket. So basically it's kind of like, what is that? The Kerplunk game, but with stairs, a basket and a tennis ball. I don't, I have no idea how hard this is going to be. Okay. So here are the stakes. I get five tries and I have to get one ball in the basket in five tries. If I don't get that, I can do double or nothing. And then I get five more tries to get one ball in the basket. But if I still didn't get one ball in the basket for 10 tries, then I have to add another book to the TBR. <laughs> but okay, so let's get it set up and see how it goes. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> so that means that I get to pick Throne of Glass to be this spins book. And that's awesome. That's exciting. <laughs> Make my way downtown, down the stairs. Going slow, cause I have a hurt leg. <laughs> she loves me, I swear. That was complete luck. There was no skill involved. But yeah, so throwing it back to past Sydney to just finish out the game. space that you haven't yet seen. And this is the phone a friend space. So today, since I have pledged my allegiance to the penguin queen herself, Molly, I have her on standby and I am going to FaceTime her. I'm going to get a prompt from her. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, good. Thank you for being on my phone a friend today. <laughs> So the name of the game of this one is I am asking Molly for a prompt and she is going to give me a prompt for me to pick a book. And I think that she's ready for it. I know what you probably think I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do it. Oh. I want you to book that I have gifted you. Oh. Okay. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Okay. There are so many options. <laughs> okay, so I have to go look and pile them together and figure out which one I wanna pick. But okay, no, that's a really cute one. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, I love you. I love you too, I talk to you later. Talk to you later. Okay, bye. bye. <laughs> okay, so that was unexpected. I thought that she would automatically give me a prompt that would end up with me choosing the bone season because that's her brand of series. So I was quite surprised that she didn't automatically choose that, but that's a really cute prompt. I really like that one. So I'm gonna run upstairs and look through all of the ones that Molly has gifted me and then I will be right back with my choice. <laughs> okay, so I am kind of being mean to myself because I very well could have picked from two books that she gifted me specifically for my Polarthon prompts, but I really wanna read this book. <laughs> And I think that this might be the very first book that Molly ever gifted me. And this is a series that I just really wanna continue. So for this spin, this prompt that I just got, I am going to be choosing Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. This is book two in the Legacy of Orisha series. And I gave the first book, Children of Blood and Bone, Five stars. I would give it more if I could. I love that book so much. And I know that some people don't really like the second one that much, but I have high hopes for it because I really loved the first one, again, with my whole heart. So I am very excited to finally get to this book and continue on with this series. So thank you, Molly, for not only gifting me this, but also giving me the prompt that allowed me to read it. <laughs>
Okay, so here's the thing. Spin Six obviously just gave me graphic novel or manga. I don't have any that I haven't already read. And I'm not like on a book buying ban, but like I need to be. <laughs> Caleb says that we could build a whole house with the amount of cardboard that has come to our house in the past year. <laughs> So I want to try to avoid purchasing a new book just for this spin. So I'm going to not do this spin. However, since I am skipping this spin, I'm adding on another book at the end. So right now we're sitting at seven books instead of five. I think that's a fair trade. It might even be more mean to myself than anything because I just, I just physically don't have a graphic novel that I haven't already read. But I feel like there has to be a penalty for skipping a prompt, so. There it is. I'm gonna add on another book. <laughs> Joke's on me because after filming this I did find Saga, a graphic novel, and I would have loved to read it. But instead I gave myself a punishment I didn't deserve. <laughs> So for that spin, I actually landed on a color, so I got to pick up a prompt that was a five-star prediction. And for this one, I ended up going to my five-star predictions video that I did a couple months ago and choosing a book from that video. And the book that I chose is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I am so excited to finally have it on my TBR because I read the Poedex and absolutely loved it. I love that this one is also written in verse. And just Elizabeth Acevedo is such a lovely writer and I am very, very excited to experience another novel by her. And I know I do it all the time, but I have to take this dust jacket off and just appreciate it for a second. Ooh, so good. And in the story, we have two sisters. One of them lives in New York City and the other one lives in the Dominican Republic. I'm not sure. I don't think that they know that they are sisters until they learn that the father they share ends up dying in a plane crash. And it says, Poppy's death uncovers all the painful truths he kept hidden and the love he divided across an ocean. And now, Yaharia and Kamino are both left to grapple with what a new sister means to them and what it will take to keep their dreams alive. I had to take that clip a couple times because I kept fumbling over the name Kamino because I'm a neuro ICU nurse and at work, a Camino is what we use to monitor pressure in the head. We drill into our patient's skull and put like a monitor in their brain and monitor like the pressure in their head via that probe. So like, <laughs> I kept fumbling over Camino because that's, that's what I know. Camino is a brain monitor, but not for this book. It is a human person. But anyways, I'm very much looking forward to finally picking this book up. <laughs> space, but this one has the potential to be okay for me. And the prompt was a book your friend or someone you trust hated. So I went to Twitter and asked all my followers, what is a popular book that you hated, but everyone else seems to love? And that tweet is blowing up. <laughs> so many people have so many strong opinions about books <laughs> and it is hilarious. There's 55 responses and I just need one. I just, I just need one book. <laughs> So we are going to scroll down. Molly said one of us is lying. And I that is a book that I definitely do want to read. So maybe I will keep that in my back pocket. Ooh, Ninth House. I definitely do want to read Ninth House, but Ninth House has a lot of, if not all of my trigger warnings wrapped up in that one book. And I don't know if I'm at a place where I can read it, you know? So I might hold off on that one, but I'll keep it in mind. Someone said Ready Player One, and I have legitimately just started reading that book today <laughs> for a secret vlog that's coming out later. It's in that same one with the mystery book. Ooh, Bree said The Guest List. That's another thriller that I actually do wanna read. Dang it, thrillers are so like hot and cold. People either love them or they hate them. And I know that there are people who really like The Guest List and One of Us is Lying, but like, I trust these people. I trust Bree and Molly, and if they hated them, that makes me nervous. <laughs> Someone said Felix Ever After. That's just incorrect. It is a wonderful book. <laughs> I've seen way too many Illuminae Files and I feel like crying, okay? Illuminae Files is the best. I will hear nothing else of it. <laughs> oh my God. Rachel said Beach Read by Emily Henry. <laughs> no! 
up. Man, that one might win. Okay, so I'm looking at Rachel's all-time favorite books on her Goodreads just to see if I really can trust her. Okay, Ready Player One, Thunderhead, Silver Linings Playbook. I really hated that movie. <laughs> <laughs> she rated Radio Silence three stars and said, I'm underwhelmed. Oh, Rachel, I don't know if I trust you. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna leave Rachel linked down below regardless because she is fantastic, but I don't know if we have the same reading tastes. So for this prompt, I might have to not do it. But if you watched my 2021 goals video, you know that reading thrillers was a goal of mine, like getting deeper into the genre. So I guess I should pick one of those thrillers, right? Since I'm already doing some recommended by Molly today, I'm gonna go with Brie. Hers was the guest list, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, so I have decided to go with Brie. She's over at The Locked Book Titian. I will link her down below. She is absolutely fantastic. And she also apparently hates The Guest List by Lucy Foley. <laughs> now I'm nervous. I was really excited about this book. And I mean, I still am because I think that it is gonna be really good. So like, I am excited about this prompt that I got, but I also trust Brie a lot. So I guess we'll see if our opinions align or if we disagree on this book. <laughs> So I ended up landing on phone a friend again. So Molly is still on standby. She's hanging out reading. So she said that she is willing to do another prompt for me. And so let's just call her up and see what she has. My hello again. Uh, hi again. <laughs> Long time no see. Um, for the last prompt, so, just so you know, I ended up going with the, oh, shit, the very first book that you ever gifted me. Do you remember what it was? No. Children of Virtue and Vengeance? Oh my god. That was so long ago. <laughs> I know, I'm so excited about it. Me too. Yay. So, what you got now? You ready for your second prompt, ma'am? <laughs> I am. <laughs> for your second prompt, I would like you to pick a book that rhymes with... <laughs> Treason. <laughs> you said you weren't going to. <laughs> oh, but you did. <laughs> okay, so Molly has an agenda and she's pushing it. And we all know what the answer to this one is. <laughs> it's sitting upstairs, so I'll go grab it. But spoiler alert, it's the bone season. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. You like what I did there? It was actually brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're the best. I love you. I love you too. Bye. <laughs> So if you don't know, The Bone Season is a series by Samantha Shannon in which being a clairvoyant is deemed a criminal offense. That being said, a clairvoyant underworld has developed full of clairvoyants who are combating persecution and avoiding capture. And our main character is Paige Mahoney who lives a double life. She is a clairvoyant and she uses her unnaturalness illegally while hiding her gift from her father who works high up in the Scion regime. Last month, I ended up reading the prequel to this book, The Pale Dream dreamer for the buzzword-a-thon. Last month the buzzword was dream, so I ended up reading the prequel to this, and so this actually works out pretty well because I actually fell in love with The Pale Dreamer. I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did because it was just a short little novella, but I am super intrigued by this series now, and I am very excited that Molly ended up picking the prompt that rhymed with treason for me to pick the bone season. <laughs> okay, so I have to go film those challenge prompts, which you already know the results of, but I still don't. So I'm gonna go film those, but this is the end of the video. Thank you so, so much for being here, taking time out of your day to hang out with me for a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe down below, like the video. I always appreciate your support. Be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.